Morning, and welcome to Christian Pentecostal Church's Devotional Moment. I'm Pastor Brenda Bird. Would you get your Bibles and turn with me to John chapter 14, verse 6. And while you're doing that, I'm going to open in prayer. Father, we thank you so much this morning for this beautiful, beautiful day, for your mercies are new to us every morning. And I just pray, oh God, that each person that's in the sound of my voice, that you would encourage their heart, that you would fill their hearts with hope this morning, oh God, as we sit down and feast on your word together. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father unless he comes by me. So the title of this devotional this morning is Jesus, the way. Will you turn with me to John chapter 15, and we're going to read verses 5 through 7. And Jesus is speaking here, and he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Hallelujah. Many times when we look at this word abide, abiding in, many people look at it as if Jesus is saying, name it and claim it. Whatever you say, you know, I'm going to give to you. But this word abide is more than that. This word abide means a lifestyle. This word abide is walking in and living in constant harmony with God. It is a lifestyle, not a clicheic word. He tells us in Matthew 7, verses 9, uh, 13 and 14, excuse me. He says, enter in by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many are on that pathway. He says, but the pathway to eternal life is narrow and few find it. He tells us also in that verse, I think it's verse 16. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my father. Isaiah tells us in Isaiah 30, 21, he said, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. I know this morning that, especially those who are believers in Christ, we want to be on the right pathway, amen? We want to be walking God's way. We don't want to just be in religion, we want to be in that relationship that God has, has so wonderfully provided for us through his son. So let's talk about that this morning. Jesus, the way, what is God's will and way according to the scriptures? How do we accept this love gift of salvation that God has provided to us through Jesus Christ? Let's go to the mountain of transfiguration. Let's look at this way. This, you know, people say, you know, uh, you say that Jesus is the only way. You know, that can't be possible. I didn't say it, and you didn't say it. This is what the Word of God says. And so it's important for us to uh, walk like Jesus, walk in the pathway that God the Father has provided for us through Jesus. Love as we walk this lifestyle, let our light shine that men may see our good deeds and glorify our Father in heaven. We ought to be the salt of the earth, according to Matthew 5. What, is, what does salt do? Salt seasons. Salt preserves. In biblical times, they use salt to make uh, bombs that heal. This is why we call Jesus the bomb of Gilead. It was made out of salt. Also, salt is to make us thirsty. 
The more we read of the word of God, the more that we serve God, the more we should have thirst to know him more. This is a lifestyle. This is not a, uh, you visit every now and then. The Lord wants us to come on in and sit at the table where the food is being, where the food is spread and where real life is going on. By now you should be at Mark, hallelujah, chapter 9, and we're going to read verses 1 through 4. Jesus says, as assuredly, this is a fact, this is truth, I say to you that there are some standing here who will not taste death till they see the kingdom of God present with power. And so he was speaking to his disciples that was walking with him during that time, but something happened six days later. Let's look at it. Verse two. Now, after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up on a high place, a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. Transfigured basically means elevated to a beauty beyond. It's, it's, a, it's, it's glorious. Now look what they saw. Verse three, his clothes became shining exceedingly white like snow, such as no launderer on earth can whiten them. And Elijah appeared to them with Moses and they were talking to Jesus. Here we see Elijah who represents the prophets and we see Moses who represents the law brought together in Jesus Christ. Jesus fulfilled the law and the prophets. It is in him. Now let's prove that. Go with me to Hebrews. Hallelujah. Jesus is the culmination of the law and the prophets. Thank you, Lord God. Go with me to Hebrews. Now let's look at verses chapter 10. And the first thing we're going to look at verses five through seven. Now I just said to you that Jesus on that mountain of transfiguration, we saw Elijah representing the prophets and we saw Moses representing the prophet, uh, representing the laws coming together in the embodiment of Jesus Christ. Let's prove that. Hebrews chapter 10, verse five through seven says this. Let's pick it up at three. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sin every year. We know that, that every year that the priests had to come and offer up sacrifices of all kinds of animals that for the uh, sins of, that the people have committed throughout the year, but it just covered their sin. Keep that in mind. It just covered their sin. This is why they had to do it every single year. Verse three said, but in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sin every year, but it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Therefore, when he came into the world, Jesus, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me and burnt offering and sacrifices for sin. You had no pleasure. Then I said, behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. Verse 10 says, by that, that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. And every priest stands ministering daily, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. But this man, hallelujah, after he had offered one sacrifices for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God from that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, he, Jesus, has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us. For after he had said this, this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and into their minds. I will write them. Then he adds their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember no more. 
Now where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. There is one offering, one offering for sin, and his name is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way, brothers and sisters. John 3, 16 says, God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Jesus Christ may be saved. Jesus is the way to salvation. Jesus is the way to eternal life. We are still in Hebrews uh, chapter 9, verse 27 says, And it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. Many people think, you know, when you die, you just go into eternity and that's it. Oh no, the Bible tells us we die once, but then we come before God for judgment. And this is the will of God. This is why Jesus came to die for us, that when we stand before him, we will not be judged for our sins. Oh, that's hallelujah shouting words. God has made a way for you and I to be in that first relationship with him that Adam had before he disobeyed God. But it's done through Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that we inherited Adam's nature. But when we are born again, according to John chapter 3, that we receive the nature of God. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, if any man or woman is in Christ, they are a new creation. Old things are passed away and all things become new. When it says that, it's talking about mankind and in mankind is male and female. We're still in Hebrews chapter nine, verse 24, all the way to 28 says this, for Christ has not entered the holy place made with hands, which are copies of the true, the, the tabernacle that Moses uh, erected, God gave, gave him every dimension, every of uh, the instructions of the height, the depth and the width. And he told him to build it and have it built exactly as he had given him the measurements because it was a replica of the true one in heaven. Jesus didn't enter into the copy like the one that Moses had made, but into heaven itself, this verse says, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood of another. He then would have let, had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this to judgment, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. Hallelujah. He's coming back. First Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18 says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then those who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall comfort one another with these words. Hallelujah. He's coming back, brothers and sisters. Jesus is alive. Let your mind think on that. Be encouraged today. I know you may be in a hard place today. Many are sick. Many are going through this pandemic. Many have lost their jobs. Many don't even know how they're going to pay their will. But I want to encourage you and remind you that he is Jehovah Jireh. He is the Lord God who provides. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord God that heals. Hallelujah. He is Jehovah Rohe, the Lord God, our shepherd. Hallelujah. He is El Shaddai, the Almighty mighty, efficient one. He will meet your needs 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. We all may not understand what exactly is going on, but I can encourage you and remind you that God is on the throne. Hallelujah. And that God has a purpose and a plan. I can remind you that we know that all things, according to Romans 8, work together for good for those who are called according to his promises. Hallelujah. Be encouraged today. I pray today that those of you who are hurting today, whether it is because of a loved one who has transitioned or because one who is struggling today, I just want to encourage you and remind you that the Lord loves you, that he promised that he would never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. If you need food, we have our pantries every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can call the church at 718-273-5850 and you will be uh, further directed. Also, if you want to uh, attend the church in person, we ask that you also call that same number, 718-273-5850 to be registered. We would prefer that you go online and be registered on our website. However, if you're having difficulty, you may still call the church. I want to remind you that every day, tune into the devotionals that each one of your pastors are uh, seeking God and reading his word to bring to you. We want to encourage you. We want to love on you. We want to walk with you through this trying time in your life. I also want to remind you that on Sunday, we are live streaming at our 11 o'clock services. Uh, we are continuing. We are also continuing uh, each month throughout the month with our engaging ministries. All of them are there. Also, I want to remind you on Sundays at 9 a.m. we have our Bible Institute. Come on in and sit down and enjoy the word of the Lord where the table is spread. Hallelujah. And life is being uh, given. Study the word that you may be able to ask the questions that you uh, may be having. The questions of the heart. I want to close with these two verses. These few verses out of Philippians chapter 3. It says, Brethren, join in following my example. This is Paul speaking. And, not, and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly and their glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able to even to subdue all things unto himself. Be encouraged. I close with this verse, Philippians 4, 19, and my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. May the Lord bless you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his glorious countenance, countenance upon you and give you his peace. I love you with the love of Jesus Christ. Enjoy your day. 